Five World of Warcraft records that will never be broken. Honestly, seems a bit sus, but could be pretty cool, so let's find out. Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to this Epic Gamer video. So I'm sure many of you guys are aware of WoW players that have taken things to the extreme. How oh, that's Swifty, and I think this is the level 1 raid that he did that broke the server because there were simply too many people, and then he got banned for this. That was pretty insane. Also, remember the good old days? When you woke up, it was summer, you were not- you didn't have to go to school, and a Swifty video popped up? Man, those were the good times, you know? Those were the good times. However, there are some WoW players that have done things truly amazing, or have taken things a little too far. In this the video, fuck? we'll be taking a look at five WoW records that will never be broken, so let's get right into it. Starting off this video is Factionless Max Level. So, as we all know, from the beginning of WoW's history, you have to choose your faction, either the Horde or the Alliance. This has been the case since Vanilla WoW, but in Mists of Pandaria, there was the Pandaren race who started off- Oh, I know this one! So, there was this insane guy who got the max level cap when Mr. Pandaria came out by picking flowers. This must be the guy. Off the game, factionless. In the starting zone for the Pandaren, you reach the end of the quest line where you are forced to choose yep. between playing as Alliance or Horde. Blizzard obviously intended for you to inevitably leave the Pandaren starting zone at about level 10. However, a player named Neutral Agent had other ideas. He decided to make the most out of his character without ever leaving the Wandering Isle. He's been playing for over 8 years, <laughs> leveling up his character by picking mining and herbalism nodes to gain small... Oh my god, look at that, 20 XP. I didn't even notice. Now, I quit playing World of Warcraft a while ago, and I think I remember when Herbalism did uh, give you initially experience, but I only remember it giving experience at the very, very low levels, you know, being an undead and picking Herbalord and doing all of that stuff with the gloom weed and whatnot. I, I remember that, but after I don't remember it giving experience. So this guy is getting 20 XP a pop. This probably took him days, if not months, to actually grind out the level cap. Holy c crazy, boys. All amounts of experience to level his character up. It's worth mentioning that the XP you get from mining copper ore and peace bloom is minuscule relative to XP needed to level up near yeah. the level cap. In fact, near the end of the level cap, he was getting 20 experience per herbalism or mining node picked. To simply... Isn't that like, uh, I think that was the normal experience, Th does it actually ever increase? I honestly forgot that you even got experience for, for, uh, for doing that. How long did it take him? It must have been months. Simply go from level 119 to 120, you would need about 1 million experience. Not counting all the levels before that, however, neutral- 1 million experience, 20 XP a pop, that's the why- uh, so he needs to acquire 500,000 Peace Bloom nodes that give 20 experience. 500,000! Even, even if you acquire one node a second, which is by the way impossible, that would still take you months! Oh my god, that guy's insane! I never knew how long it took. I just know. I, I just remember hearing that someone did it. But man, it must have taken him literally months. Neutral agent managed to do the impossible, and on 2018, October 27th, he reached the level cap of 120 without joining the Horde or Alliance. In fact, he makes a tradition of streaming his leveling process to the new level cap with each new expansion. Blizzard recognized the streamer's insane dedication to staying neutral that they even made him an NPC. You can find the NPC oh. called Venerable Shaman in the Monk class hall running around the zone mining ore and picking herbs. But considering the long hours he put in accomplishing this crazy feat... Does this show how many hours he needed to play? Because there's no way- it took him months, there's no way it was less. I don't think anybody will be trying this challenge anytime soon. Raiding during an earthquake. So I'm sure many of you have been playing WoW during some more times when- I'm sorry, but that does not sound impressive at all. Uh, anyone who plays Dota and has seen what the Filipinos do during floods, 
playing pl- pl- playing while an earthquake is happening se- seems so less impressive. Like that that earthquake needs to be at, at, at a, a scale ten, and you need to be at the, at the top of the I don't know Burj Khalifa for anyone to care because those Filipinos play while floods are happening. And they can get electrocuted any moment if a wave just comes in and it's a little bit too big, okay? They do the little floaty raft things around their power cords. It can go so wrong any moment. I'm sorry, but earthquakes don't seem impressive. When you felt sleepy, sick, or whatever, and maybe you felt hardcore. However, in this circumstance, a WoW player took his dedication to a game to a whole new level. A WoW player named Rio Sierra was caught raiding during the Legion World of Warcraft expansion. His guild was fighting a really tough boss that Shame. they hadn't beaten yet called Odin. During the fight against Odin, this WoW player starts experiencing an earthquake in real life. Despite his room literally shaking and being <laughs> flung out of his chair, he still tries to play WoW and help his guild take down the boss. He manages to ignore the earthquake, but it got to the point where he couldn't play and his character in-game dies due to the AoE damage in-game. I think it's pretty amazing that the earth itself is literally shaking and the foundations of your house are moving, but you are Bro, that's kind of fucking hilarious though. Still committed to maintaining your DPS. It's quite dedicated, especially considering that this was apparently a seven point A true gamer. A true gamer would have just continued. Point eight earthquake in magnitude, which by the way Great earthquake that can totally destroy communities near its epicenter. Major earthquake causing serious damage. So he was there. He is very, very big and above average. It sounds like an excuse for messing up, but it really did happen. Luckily enough, he came out of it okay, and nothing bad happened to Rio. Collect what do you mean nothing bad happened? He lost DPS. I think that was the biggest disappointment of that day for him. All plate transmog. So transmog in World of Warcraft is a big deal, and a lot of players have dedicated their playtime in WoW to collecting things like pets, mounts, and of course... Transmog is the end game of literally any online multiplayer game ever. You know it's true. It's absolutely unquestionable. Every game that you play, if you're a normal person, at some point you're gonna get bored of doing the dungeons, doing the raiding, doing the everything. And at that moment, you know what you do? You open the collection log, you open the achievement tab, you open up the wardrobe, you do those things. So, that is the true end game of the game. Killing the final boss? Pfft, who cares, honestly, right? Every other uh, second noob does that. But getting all the good-looking pieces and achievements? Now that's spicy. I mean... Have you ever have you ever tried to uh, show someone who is into the end game raiding stuff in any game your achievement collection and it's super big and impressive and they're like have you killed your last boss and you're like no I don't care and then you just keep showing them your achievement tab and it's all green sparkly and nice looking and they feel bad about themselves because they haven't done it and they understood that they have wasted all this time trying to kill the end boss. Well, the true end game is farming achievements and stuff. It's true. Transmog. However, transmog in WoW is so vast, there are so many expansions, many quest items, many gear pieces that can provide a different model for your character to wear. A WoW streamer by the name of Desmus Fisto has been playing WoW and doing some charity streams. One goal he set for himself was to collect all the transmog for his class, in particular, plate transmog. Now, any transmog collectors watching this will know how insane that goal really is. As in World of Warcraft, there are 11,697 plate transmog appearances to collect. That's a tremendous amount of- That number means nothing. Think about it in this way. There are certain things that you can do only once per week. And then you, let's say, there's like 20 things that you need to get there. And every week, there's no guarantee that you're going to get these 20 things, okay? You can get duplicates, you can get nothing, and some things have like a 1% chance to drop. So, you need to roll the dice and do it multiple weeks at a time. Sure, it's one time per week, but achieving a full 100% uh, collection in anything in World of Warcraft Transmog related is actually seriously impressive. Because that, that takes a lot of time.
of grinding, questing, mob farming, and raiding collect all these appearances. However, Des Mephisto managed to do it. The final piece of equipment he needed was the Crimson Carapace leg plates, which has a small chance of dropping from a Warlords of Draenor Garrison weekly quest. This requ See, weekly. It's usually going to be some kind of weekly thing, because the reality is you're capped by the amount of times you can do something. That's the true cap on collection, uh, collection items and slots and things like that. How many times per week, per day, per month can you actually attempt it? Required over 100 attempts. However, he finally did it on stream, collecting the final piece of plate transmog. Bam! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> nice. Most viewed WoW video. So on World of Warcraft, there are a lot of different content creators on YouTube and Twitch. However, what I ask you, which YouTube video about WoW has had the most views? Some people may assume it would be a trailer or an expansion or something. Nah, probably some kind of Swifty video. However, those who played back in the day will know it belongs to Leroy Jenkins. Oh shit! For anybody who doesn't know, Leroy Jenkins was a... Wait, you can definitely break that record, you know? You you can definitely break that record. Famous World of Warcraft clip on the internet that transcended the game and became part of mainstream internet culture. In the early days of Vanilla 2005, a WoW player named Leroy Jenkins made a video where his guild is discussing strategy of how to beat a boss in the dungeon. When Leroy charged... That video was fake, by the way. Can you imagine that? That video was fake. Your ch your whole childhood was fake. ...is in, and aggros all the mobs in the room, forcing his guild to fight, which, of course, leads to a wipe. This clip is classic, however, one point it had was over 40 million views on YouTube. Jesus fucking Christ. ...the video was either taken down or the channel got deleted, but it's cr Oh, I had no idea. Uh, but fun fact about the guy who is uh, Leroy Jenkins in real life, he tried to milk that as hard as possible, but sadly nothing worked out for him. He tried to make appearances, he tried to do Blizzard things, but man, he absolutely got nothing out of that fame. And he tried really hard. Kinda sad. Crazy to think that this meme became the biggest WoW video, or even one of the biggest gaming videos of all time. There are, of course, re-uploads of this video with tens of millions of views, but the original was definitely the most viewed video about WoW, which is pretty cool. It's gonna get beat. It's probably gonna get beaten, right? Sooner or later. Get him down fast, because we're bringing all these guys. I mean, we'll be in trouble if we don't take them down quick. Uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. We should be able to pull it off this time. Thumbs up. Ready, guys? Let's or do this. Leroy Dragons! Oh my god, he just ran in. Oh my god. The eggs keep alive, cast. more responding. I don't think you can cast with that shit. Oh my god. Shout out. World first level 60. So Vanilla WoW was way back in the day. In fact, it was released as early as 2004. Back then, a lot of people approached World of Warcraft, and the gaming scene in general was very different. For this reason, it's unclear who got the world's first level 60 back in the day of Vanilla. However, a hunter by the name of Joanna owned the record for the fastest level 60 of 4 days, 20 hours, and 52 minutes on your slash play. Yup. This back in the day... Joanna has also a guide for leveling a hunter. ...was very impressive. However, when Blizzard released Classic WoW in 2019, the WoW community had a significant amount more knowledge and experience playing the game. One player named Joker D set out the task of reaching level 60 in Classic WoW before anyone else. This was seen as a big competition with old school WoW players and several noteworthy players and in guilds including Method attempted to get the world first level 60 during the launch period of Classic WoW. Joker D was a relatively unknown player and was streaming a speedrun to get 60 the first. Unlike conventional wisdom back in the day, he opted to play as a mage instead of a hunter, which was previously thought to be the fast- Yep, you know what he did? A weeple. <laughs> Hunters were considered the best because, man, hunter pets just make things so incredibly easy. They can tank, they can do this, they can do that. It's just, hunter pets are just ridiculously good in vanilla, but this guy just a weeple. That's it. 
that, that, that's it. He literally just blizzarded things down, did quests, and called it a day. So simple. Justice levelers. Mages in Classic have tremendous AoE damage potential with spells like Blizzard and Crowd... Yeah, they tried to nerf it later on, but it didn't work. And nowadays, there are modern, uh, modern ways to get level 60 in speedruns in World of Warcraft. And the way you do that is by optimizing uh, summons and dungeon clears. You know, level 60s clear dungeons for you and things like that. That's how you do it nowadays. But I gotta say, I also had a mage. And I did AoE leveling. And, man, Zulfarak was so enjoyable to AoE level. Was it Zulfarak? Yeah, it was. You know, in in, in uh, near Silithus, I forgot the name, Desilus. No, I forgot the name already, it's been a while. But man, doing that instance was so fun. So fun. I, 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 I once got the Shadow Ring drop, the one that's really, really good for uh, for shadow damage. I put it on the auction house, and I did not, not, not know how much it cost, because no single ring was on there. And the moment I listed it, it got instantaneously sniped by a bot, because turns out I listed it by, uh, by like... 50 gold less than it's actually and then then it actually was worth yeah that was painful controlling abilities like frost nova which allowed them to level significantly faster than other classes yeah joker this d place was also. grinding out levels on his no mage taking advantage of the mage's op aoe farming abilities joker d grinded his way to level 60 and basically never slept the four days only sleeping a handful of hours he reached level 60 with a slash played of three days 20 hours and 40 minutes a significant accomplishment considering the second that is insane second closest to joker d was a level 56 it even got to the point where 300,000 people were watching this event take place live. Think about that. 300... Man, when Classic launched, that was... That was huge. Playing Classic in the first days of the opening... Oh my god, where there were 10, 10, 10 people on literally every single mob in the starting zone. In every starting zone. And there was a bit of layering, if I'm not mistaken, even then. It was almost impossible to get it. It was insane. It was so unbelievably cool. Great experience. Thousand Ninja and Tifu don't even get those numbers combined. This is a record that can never be broken. However, if when the Burning Crusade expansion comes out, it will be interesting to see the WoW community compete for the world's first. Admittedly, yeah, that's true. That that is a record that can never be broken because it's the world first level sixty. But some of these records can be broken. The plate mail guy, the. Pl uh, Something else also here, the World of Warcraft uh, video view thing. I think those can easily be broken. 70. Leave a like and subscribe if you... Yep, that's pretty much it. Also, well, that was that was pretty interesting. Admittedly, this guy's channel is dead and he doesn't upload anymore, which is kind of sad. But it is what it is. Anyway, like and subscribe. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.